Hello, everybody. This is Martin Patella at Life Enthusiast, our online TV and radio network. Today, I'm here with Scott Button, my partner in podcasting, broadcasting, and networking. And we are wanting to share with you the news. The news is that the U.S. Senate has approved the merger and the sale of Monsanto to Bayer. Yeah, that's pretty big news. And it's worth $63 billion. Which is just chump change, really, huh? But what this is really interesting about is this. The name Monsanto is going to disappear. Because, of yep. course, you may have noticed that uh, the world has essentially turned on Monsanto. It has been called the Monsatan and uh, the cause of all ill health. Which it has been. I mean, Monsanto, the gifts keep on coming. First, it was the Agent Orange, then the 2,4-D, and now the famous glyphosate. Yeah. And of course, Monsanto has been insisting that glyphosate is safe, especially in minute doses. And they're saying, look, glyphosate is a herbicide. It kills unwanted plant life. Who decides what's unwanted plant life? Well, a weed is a plant that's in the wrong place. Right? In a cornfield, a radish is a weed. In a radish field, corn is a weed. But the point is that uh, farmers can plant the plants that have been specifically bred to be resistant to this Roundup, or glyphosate, and then spray the field with the glyphosate, and all plant life dies except for those that were bred to be resistant. That's the idea. So you can now buy corn that has been sprayed with glyphosate, and there will be some residual small amounts of glyphosate. Or you may be buying wheat that has been sprayed with glyphosate because it's got this wonderful ability to cause the plant to push more energy into its seed just as it's dying. It makes drier wheat, higher grade wheat, better looking wheat, but contaminated with glyphosate weed, wheat. So what does this mean? When you're eating these trace amounts of glyphosate, you're affecting the microbes in your body, the microbiome. Which could be considered unwanted plants if they were somewhere else. Exactly that. The, the, the microbiome is both flora and fauna, the fauna being animal and flora being plant. But they're both types of these microbes inside of you. And so as you're weeding them out with glyphosate, just microscopic doses, you're changing the terrain within you which has been showing to be dramatic. The wheats that we're eating today and the wheat products that we're eating today are nowhere near as safe as they used to be. This, this gluten-free um, craze, quote-unquote, is taking hold because people are finding that when they don't eat wheat products, they actually feel better. The keto diet craze is taking hold because the people are finding that when they're eating no grains at all, which means no wheat, no corn, they're finding themselves performing better. What if it were this contamination by glyphosate that was the cause of that? Is it possible, Martin, that gluten is the fall guy for problems people are having eating wheat that really is not maybe gluten, it could be other poisons that we're using to produce the, the wheat? Which is highly possible. I had this experience myself. I went to Italy on a business trip, and the only food I could find had wheat in it. And I thought, you have pastas and bread. That's what you yeah, eat in Italy. Yeah, yeah. And so I thought, oh, how is this going to go? Well, I have to eat something, so I guess I'm just going to cave in and see how it goes. Nothing happened. I was just fine. So I Yet when you get home. Oh, I can't, I can't eat American wheat. No way. 
But in Italy, I was able to eat it. So I was asking the host, he's a naturopathic physician, so I'm asking him, can you please explain to me the wheat situation? And he says, well, in Italy, if it is to be called grano, which is in English grain, but it's the Italian word for wheat, it has to be grown according to the old rules, which means the three-foot tall wheat, not the dwarf, and uh, non-hybridized, old-fashioned, old-style Durham wheat, not genetically modified. And so Italians continue to eat the old-style wheat. So I went online and I was checking in with other people, and sure enough, it is true. They, they travel to Italy, they can eat all the pasta they want. Come back to America, not, not a chance. So getting back to Monsanto and Bayer, the Organization of Competitive Markets, a group that focuses on agricultural antitrust and trade policy, disagreed with the DOJ, the Department of Justice, decision to allow the merger to go through. And they came out with a statement that was, this news makes it clear that our anti-monopoly laws are completely worthless and the U.S. Department of Justice merger review process is pointless. Econom economists have well established that there is a strong likelihood of market abuse when four companies control 45% of the market. And the fact that the DOJ has just allowed one company to control 77% of all seed corn, 69% of all seed traits, and 58 to 97% of the markets in cotton, soybeans, and canola means that the DOJ has just authorized a monopoly. And American families, farmers will pay the price for this action. Consumers will see fewer choices in the market. And where is the justice in the department of? Of course, Bayer says that the challenges that American growers face on a daily basis demand continuous access to new innovation, which they promise to bring. Yes, well, Bayer used to be known as the IG Farben in uh, Germany. It's always important to look at history, right? Yeah, they gave us the Cyclone B gas, the one that uh, was used in the gas chambers of the concentration camps. So, I don't know, I suppose everybody has some history. It's just that this company's history isn't the kind, nice, support humanity. They are more the I'll do anything for a bit of profit kind of company. And I suspect that that sort of general mindset is still with it. Well, they're after death, except instead of uh, spraying people, they're spraying plants. Right. Well, you know, they, they, one of their other very big sellers is the neonicotinoids, which appear to be the stuff that is responsible for the die-off of the bees. In fact, in Europe, neonics have been banned. America is resisting. What, what we have found, for example, consider the almonds. When you have enough bees, you can produce 3,500 pounds of almonds per acre. No bees, 400 pounds of almonds per acre. How would you like to have, an, what is it, eight and a half times more or less crop? on your soil? What's right. it going to do to pricing when the bees disappear? Oh, well, I'm, I, digress. I digress. I can just imagine that this wonderful merger is going to cause a monopolization of the seed stock and, uh, and further push into making the legislative effort of people who want GMOs labeled and declared is more difficult. So, so long as we keep voting in the people into the Congress that uh, have brought us this, I think we're going to continue to get the kind of foods that we deserve. What would be some actions that uh, people listening to this could take? Well, I think it's too late to start writing to the senators. I think they've already done it. So the right action now is to get involved in the political process is to participate, is to vote for people who are not owned by the capital, by the big business. And first and foremost, vote with your wallet. Whatever, you know, I say it this way, money is the oxygen of the economy. 
Wherever you put your money, that's where the fire glows brighter. So if you want more of the unhealthy stuff, keep buying it. If you want more of the healthy stuff, then buy the healthy stuff and do not buy the other. The most revo revolutionary thing you can do is support an organic farmer. And I saw, actually, when you said that, I saw a meme the other day that said, the most revolutionary thing you can do right now is have a garden in your backyard and grow some of your own fruits and vegetables. All right, become a farmer yourself. Yeah, and, and it's amazing when you do that because uh, my father's had a farm forever in his backyard when, when he was living and I have some friends that have started farming. They're, you know, just a plot of land in, the, in their backyard. And when you eat a tomato that you grew or a carrot that you grew or a beet that you grew, the taste difference is absolutely astounding compared to the cardboard vegetables that we're eating in most grocery stores. It's just absolutely amazing. Right, because of course uh, the vegetables in the grocery store have been selected for their durability and shelf stability and uh, resistance to travel damage and color, the visual appeal on the shelf. They look good, but they're hollow in nutrients and... Um, well, if you've got to put something in a truck and the truck's going to drive a thousand miles to get to your store, and then it's going to run around your store and get thrown around by the guys in the store, pretty soon you're going to have nothing but mushy tomatoes if, if you're not careful, which is another reason why it's so important to buy from the local farmers. So the conclusion that I have come to is that the political process is already bought and paid for. Trying to fight that is a lost cause. So let's just make a revolution local. As, as you think globally, which means try and save yourself, act locally, which means eat food that's worth eating. So if you are involved in local food production and uh, part of an association or part of a group that's wanting to expand that and you want to get the word out, then contact Martin and myself and maybe we can have you on as a guest and you can talk from a grassroots perspective on how you're changing, how you're receiving your food or how you're growing your food or how you're getting your food. I think that would be a great thing to share with everybody and your success stories. That would be good. I remember I got a call from a Saskatchewan organic farmer a while back and he was telling me a few stories from his life. It is not an easy life. I have no utmost admiration for the people who grow my food and respect and gratitude and uh, and i'm willing to pay the extra for the organic or for the non-toxic for the locally grown it's bizarre it seems like a crazy idea to pay more for the food but the truth is if you don't you'll end up paying for the consequence later and the reason that I think the food in the grocery stores can be so much cheaper than the food at the farmer's market is a lot of the food in the grocery store is subsidized. Our government's spending fortunes on, you know, sugar beet farmers or wheat farmers or dairy farmers or this farmer or that farmer who have these huge operations and they're not spending any money on the small local farmers. So they have there's the real cost of the food and there's the subsidized cost of the food. And we're expecting the real farmer to uh, compete with subsidized food, which is not fair. And I think, you know, one of the places that we should be really looking at changing is how we support our farmers. Cause it's all, everyone wants to support the farmers, but we're supporting like the farmer that has like 10,000 square miles of farm and is a really just a corporation that's running everything as a factory, as opposed to our local farmers who are like right in the dirt working with their, with their plants and with their hands to make sure that they're, you know, then love their plants. I mean, that's the one thing I notice when I'm talking to farmer market, I'm at the farmer's market talking to farmers is 
they can tell me the whole story of this tomato that I'm thinking of buying. <laughs> you know, they remember when it was a seed and when it was, you know, the first sprout came out and all the rest of it. Uh, and I'm exaggerating only slightly. But when they talk about the different types of produce that they're bringing or the cheeses that they're bringing, they, there's a totally different story than when you're talking to somebody that's working for a large agricultural conglomerate who's trying to get you to buy their, their products on a wholesale level. Indeed, a good point. There is a political issue, the subsidies, the distortions, the uh, redistribution of wealth where the government chooses to subsidize specific industries and the subsidized grains are corn, soy, and wheat. They, they produce the most affordable food that does the most damage. Yeah, the cheapest food with the least amount of nutrition in it. And the highest amount of toxins. I, I would say it this way. There's great hope for everyone, provided they wake up and start thinking globally, acting locally, and buying themselves food that's worth eating, which means organic as much as possible, local as much as possible. And uh, this is... a place where we could pitch the uh, Exola superfoods because every bottle of that is filled with molecules of food that are worth having. Anyway, congratulations to Bayer. Sorry, congratulations to Bayer on a wonderful achievement. They are buying Monsanto. They are becoming essentially the world dominant food producer. They own the seeds. They own the marketing rights to the reproduction of plant life. It's just wild. Yeah, and I'm hoping that the change of the name or the dropping of the Monsanto name doesn't mean that Bayer all of a sudden is able to kind of slide all the Monsanto products that are banned in other countries back into those countries um, because it's no longer Monsanto. Oh, this is Bayer and it's fine. And it's no longer the damn Americans that are trying to import into, into European Union. Now it's a European-based company that wants to sell those goods. Well, it's going to be interesting because France has been adamant in blocking these things from coming into the country. Yeah. We'll see. It'll be interesting. We'll keep you up to date. So thank you for joining us, everybody. If you've got any uh, concerns about your health and you want to have someone that you can trust to talk to, Give Martin a call or email him or go to our website, life-enthusiast.com. There's lots of information there that can help you, and we are here for you. So, Martin, if somebody was interested in getting a hold of you, how can they do that? Uh, we do answer the phone at 866-543-3388. The website, Scott, already mentioned, www.life-enthusiast.com. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.